Joe and Ozzy are two remarkable people. Joe personifies the limit, limitless success and achievement that is possible in our society through intelligence, vision, hard work, and most of all, pure guts. Arriving in New York alone as a 16-year-old, Joe is today the visionary developer and investor and owner of millions of square feet of real property. As CEO of the Moynihan Group, he has an uncanny ability to foresee emerging neighborhoods and to create development strategies that transform entire areas. Joe builds not just for the sake of building, but for the essential role that real estate plays in business, commerce, tourism, personal lives. In every respect, the fabric of our cities and our society, in that sense of personal and pers professional mission, intertwined is reflected in his important contributions to philanthropy and community. He sits on the boards of the Skyline Museum, the Battery Park Conservancy, UJA Federation of New York, the Realty Foundation, and NYU's Shack Institute, and so generously supports a wide range of arts, civic, and medical causes for which he has received numerous awards. Then there is Nazi. You may not know that the name Esther comes from the Persian word for star, but there is no doubt that our Nazi is our evening's brightest star. Like Esther, she is that very rare combination of beauty and brains. She currently has a professional appointment at the Council on Foreign Relations subsequent to her graduate degree work at Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs. And just as Esther captivated the Persian, Persian king, Nazi captivates all of us with her warmth and her graciousness. The hospitality that you feel in this room tonight is due to her planning and her attention to every detail. So together, Joe and Nazi are leading members of the Iranian American Jewish community devoting their time and energy to fostering education, understanding, and awareness of important issues. And as busy as they are, Nazi and Joe have found time to raise their beautiful family of five children and to pass on to them a magnificent heritage of Jewish, Iranian, American, and universal human values. So tonight we all join in saluting Joe and Nazi Monian. And Joe and Nazi, would you please join me on stage? Let me read this. And now on behalf of Josh Nash and Rob Prusan, the chair and president of the Jewish Museum, on behalf of Joan Rosenbaum, our executive director, and the board of trustees of the Jewish Museum, I am delighted to present to you this beautiful, sterling, silver, Persian Kiddush cup based upon an original masterpiece in the museum's permanent collection with our very special thanks and our very special good wishes. Good evening and welcome, and thank you for joining us in celebrating this ancient festival of Purim. Joseph 
my children, our children, Matthew, Mitchell, Matov, Michaela Morgan, and I are extremely proud to be sharing this momentous occasion with you. And we salute you and your spirit in fighting frigid temperatures and market indices to be here tonight and mark the continuity of the most sacred of the Jewish traditions. Truly, you give a new meaning to the word friendship. Just like you, Queen Esther, our noble heroine of the court of Ahasuerus, or the, king, the Persian king Khashoggi Shah, was remarkable in her spirit for choosing vigilance over victimhood and action over apathy. She didn't ask why, but how, when she saw the fate of the most ancient Jews in the world in jeopardy. Persia, the bridge of turquoise, the land of the peacock throne and rose gardens, the land of blessed philosophers and poets, of Cyrus the Great, who freed Jews from Babylon, ordered the construction of the Second Temple, and created the first ever Bill of Rights that abolished slavery, was to extinguish its ancient Jewish citizens. Queen Esther saw something and against all odds, did something about it. For Joe and I, who grew up in our beloved country of Iran, and who came here to this most wonderful country and adopted it as our home, our lives has had its moments of uncertainties. And along the way, regardless of gender, race, religion, or origin, we've met many Queen Esthers. Iranian or American, female or male, Jew or non-Jew, we've met citizens of the world who, energized by this opportunity that this wonderful country provides and the freedom that it bestows on its citizens, transcended tremendous burdens, took great risks, and made a difference. So for me, this is the reason why we celebrate Purim. We celebrate Purim because in each one of us is a Queen Esther whose spirit strives to bridge the gaps and in the dawn of a new presidency and perhaps a new world order. Queen Esther in us does not ask but states. Let me listen, learn, and do. Let me rise above my mundane thoughts and aspire to a greater good. Let me be part of Queen Esther's legacy. Let me show the citizens of the world that we are more alike than we are different. Let me teach my children that there resides a masterpiece in each one of them worthy of this museum's brilliant collections. In short, let me be Queen Esther. With that, I want to thank you all once again from the bottom of our hearts for being here, and I want to wish you a happy Iranian New Year, Nowruz, which is non-religious, ancient, and wonderful, and it coincides with the happy festival of Purim. And I wanted to ask you to please welcome our dear fathers, Mr. Nabandagani and Mr. Ayub Moinian, to come up and recite the Hebrew prayers. Thank you. Thank you very much for